chasing the police every single day. I think I, I think I almost died the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty much left for dead. At 27 years old, Kyla Massey knows all too well the monstrous grip of physical pain. The kind of pain that is a world away from this January morning. She's just minutes from giving birth to a child she prays she can protect from living the type of life that nearly killed her. As Massey delivers a little girl to the world, she's haunted by her past. There were the beatings to her skull, arms, and legs, and the forced injections of heroin by the men she describes as her captors. Well, the, the pimps, you know, they would, they would shoot us up. We didn't, I mean, we had to sit there and take it. If we try to reject it, you know, we just get beat up. The liquid poisons rendering her helpless to nothing more than... A doll, a rag doll, voodoo doll. Just somebody constantly pricking you, making you do this and that, and not, you know, I have no say so. That's just the whole point. You don't have no control, no say so over anything. You gotta ask to use the bathroom. A reality controlled by men who sold her nightly. Some nights, how many men would you have to service? Mm, like 30 or 40. Literally feel like a slave. Mm -hmm. Modern day slave. In 2014, in hotel rooms across Fort Myers, Florida, Massey found herself in the crosshairs of a nightmare that mirrors a nexus of horrors. Human trafficking, sex exploitation, child abuse, heroin addiction. That's when I see them. When they're, <laughs> I see them when they're near death. Her lifeline to help and escape advocate Ramona Miller. Miller had long worked in the trenches, connecting with people on the streets, passing out condoms, trying to prevent HIV infection. And then her world changed. And this is a world that you find yourself in the midst of, case after case. Case after case, continuously. Because I, I was looking for one thing and I found human trafficking. All I wanted to do was help Florida get to zero by stopping HIV and STD. But what remained consistent was individuals that were being prostituted against their will. And with the nexus of drug, with, with the addictions, forced drugs. They don't take the drugs, they're given the drugs. But it's a close call. It's always a close call. A living hell Massey could describe from the inside. She said the Johns came from all sides of the track. Doctors, lawyers, cops, people with money. Did there ever seem to be any fear that authorities would come in and arrest these traffickers? <laughs> it was fear, but you have some cops who, who, who do it too. They tell you they use it against you, so you won't get arrested. So they'll say, oh, we won't take you to jail if you do this but we don't get paid, we just get, our payment is staying out of jail. Out of jail, but trapped. The system somehow is not doing what it should do. It is not fulfilling the needs of the children or of the women, but what it is doing, it is creating a generation of wounded, broken, and trapped women. And what's the cost of that, the human cost? Their lives, the human cost, their dignity, their dignity. Everything that they wish that they could be, they find themselves not having that dream anymore. And I would think that the key word to the landscape is hopelessness. Because there's no hope, because there's no true help. And what they do offer, there isn't a follow through for it. And because there's no follow through, 
we have a revolving door. You don't really get the help that you need. Are they just seeing you from program to program? And I went to, from, to program to program and not realize that I was, a, I was an addict. Yeah, I didn't think that I was an addict because it wasn't my choice. It's always, how old are they? If they're over the age of 18, we only take children. If we take children, we don't have the proper foster homes to place them in. There's always an excuse. Throughout her nightmare, from rape crisis centers to law enforcement, no one could figure out what happened to Massey's rape test, taken after her escape more than two years ago. Have you ever gotten a result of your rape kit? No. Is it outrageous? It's horrible. The circuitous road out of exploitation and drug use led back, Massey says, to more nights of horror and rape. Fear grows that the corrosive cost of being trapped can emerge as HIV. Because you don't use condoms, like you don't really have say so over whether or not to use condoms. Like they'll pay extra money not to use condoms. Yeah. And when you have a pimp, you have to do it because it's all about the money. You don't care about the, you know, the HIV or the sexually transmitted disease or being pregnant. You know, they don't care about all of that stuff. Like an increasing number of young women today reaching out for help, Massey is a former Florida foster child. She says she was abused before entering the system. I was just raped as a kid many times. Like others, so damaged she became a chronic runaway. Is there a nexus, in your opinion, between the failure of the foster care system and human trafficking in our state? Without a doubt, foster care children run away. Foster care children are the ones that are most vulnerable. Foster care children are easily human trafficked because they're hidden and human trafficking is the hidden dark world of abuse. Your pain mirrors what so many young girls are still going through today. So what would you say is the worst recollection you have of when you were a child of the ward of the state of Florida? There's so many. 52 homes is a lot. 52? Yes foster care homes. 52 foster care homes. That's where you grew up? All over the state of Florida, yes. Kate, AKA Empress Wildflower, is an alumna of the Florida foster care system. As a young girl crossing paths with Massey and now pushed over the edge, she says, to speak out after two young girls in Florida foster care committed suicide. One live on Facebook and my voice will be heard. An Empress Wildflower takes a stand on behalf of all these foster kids, and I'm not going nowhere. I will help make a change. The road to survival, not simple. Kate says she dances to help provide for her children, but says she is so much more than that. And when you hear the term trapped, what comes to mind for you? <laughs> I still feel trapped. Trapped with your thoughts, trapped with not being able to do what you know you need to do or what you think you should do. There's always, trapped is, will we break the chains? Nobody ever knows. Do I plan on breaking the chains of my own self? I call it a band-aid. The chains are always there. It's just band-aided. I'm always trapped. Since first sharing her story, hoping to open doors to help for other young women, Massey's life has changed. The rebirth of a young woman. She emerged as a proud woman at the Emmys, where her story was nominated and resonated. So here we are at the Emmys. You look absolutely magnificent. To think of going from the streets and those hotels and, and the forced drugs to this moment, what does it feel like? It feels amazing to finally be out of, you know, out of that whole world and to be taking this new step in life. We've got a, a baby on the way. 
You're a beautiful pregnant lady. How, does, how do you feel about that? Does that give you hope? Oh yes, of course. And just to know that my baby is being brought up in, and this change that's happening right now, it's just awesome, it's amazing. I love it. I tell everyone, we went from the trenches to the Emmys. <laughs> and Kyla looked beautiful. She was a princess. You gave her an opportunity to become human. Not just human, but a woman. She was no longer that rag doll. She was no longer that prostitute. She was no longer that drug addict. She was a beautiful woman. Massey's story is now incorporated as a part of the academic training at the renowned St. Thomas University Human Trafficking Accreditation Academy for police, judges, advocates, and social workers. We actually passed cross paths in our foster care traveling, you know. Um, it's, it's nice to see her want change for herself and take a stand and save herself along with helping save other people. So, yeah, it's, I admire it. I admire her. She's a strong woman for that. Maybe it's not hopeless having justice served. Maybe eventually things will change. On this day, she surprised the class at St. Thomas and received her first standing ovation. It's positive because that's letting people say, see that there is hope. Yes. However, I am still battling if it's real hope. Is it false hope, you know? And I know I want better for my baby. And I know I don't want my baby to grow up, you know, being in the system as I did, you know? So that's why I know I have to do better and I know I can do better. Hey, Sherry County, this is Sherry County Cop Watch. I am using any video here with under fair use if you uh, have criticism, reporting, teaching, etc. And please donate. I do not make money from YouTube, and uh, there are different ways to donate in the uh, video links. Thanks.